Hey guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. Yep, it's Everkade's first ever single game cartridge. This is the Full Void Special Edition. Comes complete with an art book and this lovely box set. This is cart number 32. This is one good looking box set and it's a great game too. Let's have a look at it. Okay guys, this is Everkade's first ever single game cartridge. It probably won't be the last. Um, and this is actually a special edition, I guess, to mark that occasion. And it's a damn good game. It's a brand new game as well. It's only really been out a couple of months uh, on some other formats such as Steam and PlayStation. But this is the only ever, uh, hopefully at this moment, I guess, physical version of this game. It does look really nice. I love the sort of silver writing on the side of the box there. Looks really nice. It's very high quality uh, cardboard as well. Really nice. Got a nice sort of sheen to it and shine. Um, but yeah, it looks really nice, some nice sort of box art here. Um, yeah, it's a brand new kind of 2D cinematic puzzle platformer. Kind of a little bit like Limbo meets Flashback meets Another World, that kind of thing. But it's nowhere near as frustrating, it is a lot more fun to play. So if you didn't like these games, you'll probably like this one a lot more. Again, it's not for everyone. And this is compatible with um, Evercade DXP, VS, the original uh, Evercade and also the Super Pocket. Now let's have a look what's included. Obviously we have the actual cartridge box, which we'll have a look in a second. We have, um, this is obviously special for this edition. We've got the Art of Full Void and a little poster. So let's have a quick look at the poster. It's a fairly smallish poster, it looks like an A4 size. Um, it's kind of just a poster dark poster of one of the scenes in the game and again this is another uh, scene from the game as well which is kind of cool nice included this is not in the standard edition okay let's have a look at the art of full void just a quick sort of browse through the actual um, book that's included here it's kind of like screenshots from the game and um, to start with and there's obviously a few more things beside but yeah it's certainly a really nice well designed game from the sort of graphics, obviously it's totally based on old school, to the, the sort of atmosphere that it's created within. But um, there's some really interesting stuff here. It says the it's been influenced by games such as Prince of Persia, Another World, um, and Flashback, which is pretty obvious against once you actually play through the game. But yeah, this is a really nice um, included book that shows you some of the art that was created um, for the game. Obviously, some of the conceptions that was initialized I guess look at some of the the basic scenes here and then it was obviously made into the better looking one which is really cool all the f effects were added and all the different robots and animation styles love it it's known as the bogeyman which you seem to get constantly chased through the actual game um, yeah lots of really cool stuff in here there's your uh, cover art and sort of logos as well various logos that they obviously went through to actually choose but yeah wow pretty impressive for a small team given the fact that out the bitter are generally small team but they've created a really decent game hopefully we'll see some more uh, games from out the bit on um, Evercade at some point and um, there are a couple other games which we'll look at in another video which might see um, the light of day on Evercade you never know some nice artwork here. I'm not really sure some of this is actually in the full game. There's some just additional stuff that you don't actually see, which is kind of cool. And one of the best things about it is this. The actual blue cartridge, which I think is the only one that's actually coloured blue, or any colour other than white. And it is very, very nice indeed. I love it. Hopefully we'll see more of these kind of style uh, cartridges going forward. It'd be like, nice to see some different colours. Um, obviously dependent on um, what game you're playing but it would be nice to see some more special editions as well but obviously that probably is only for single game cartridges so in the box itself um, you've got a prologue which is a little kind of art book that you should probably read before you actually start the game itself it gives you a little bit uh, of the sort of backstory to the actual um, dystopian future that we somehow find ourselves in. Also in the box we've got some stickers, some full void stickers which is pretty cool, I love it. Now also obviously you've got your manual, full manual here and there's a lot, it's actually quite thick considering it's just one game um, and there's a lot of bit of it out the bit as usual 
developer comments um, and a little bit of introduction. Um, obviously the controls, the controls are very straightforward. You get jump and X or B for action and a little bit of movement with the D-pad. It's very straightforward, there's no text I don't think in the game so it's all very much um, intuitive um, and you really just work it out as you go. Um, if you like Flashback, um, then you'll probably enjoy this. It's certainly a lot easier to pick up than another world Flashback. Um, it sort of re reminds me more of Limbo or Little Nightmares, to be honest. But there's quite a lot of detail in this little manual. It's absolutely insane. Which is brilliant. I'm pretty sure this will be the only um, physical version uh, of Full Void. I'm not sure whether they'll do a physical version for any of the other formats they might do, but at this moment in time, this is the only chance of a physical version. And just a word out to all those folks that missed out on the special edition if you ordered through Amazon. Bit of a shame, but at the time of this video, you can still pick it up from uh, one of the suppliers in Canada. I can't remember the name. VGP, I think it was. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of information in here. I'm not sure you have to read the manual. It's not one of those games you really have to read the manual kind of thing, but it's a nice touch to include. Uh, all this and there's some uh, spoilers there if you do get stuck in what to actually do in certain sections of the game and one of the really cool things about this there are achievements in the game too so one of the things i noticed on the exp version is i thought the sound was quite quiet for some reason and this is it sort of up full volume and um, i didn't have any trouble playing on the, the vs or the super pocket but on the exp i thought the sound was quite quiet not sure it's something to do with mine or it's just quite quiet I would recommend, no matter how you play this game, is to get some headphones and play it that way because it's definitely the best way to pick up that atmosphere and get stuck into the game. That's how I played this game originally and it's fantastic, really does suck you in. It's the best way, I would highly, highly recommend it. Now also, we're going to try um, this on the Super Pocket. Almost the same colour, if you squint. It's actually one's green and one's blue, but they kind of almost merge, almost. Now, happily to say it does work on the Super Pocket. Um, there's obviously some borders, but wait, we'll have a little look. I felt the sound was better on the Super Pocket. It's still pretty quiet, but I felt that the sound is certainly better. As you can see here, it works perfectly fine. The text is a little bit small, and um, you've got some top and bottom borders. Um, but we will look at this separately in another video, just to go through the game a little bit more, and just specifically look at the full uh, Void uh, Super Pocket version instead. So you can see here, there are top and bottom borders when you're playing the game, but happy to say it plays absolutely fine. I would highly recommend probably getting some headphones as well for this, but the sound is a lot better for me on the Super Pockets than they are on the EXP, which is kind of odd to me, um, without headphones that is. But it works absolutely fine. Um, on the Super Pockets, um, which obviously this is running natively, your uh, menu button will not work because there's no save states, you will just save automatically as per in game, given the fact that this is a native game. Okay guys, before we jump onto the VS and have a good playthrough at Full Void, I've also got the Standard Edition, um, this is a native Evercade game obviously, it's pretty similar, it's obviously the Standard style uh, box art, um, the actual box seems as if it's been reconfigured um, a little bit, the the cartridge seems a lot tighter, the box actually closes properly. But in the box you've just got your manual, the standard manual as per the special edition and the prologue. That's it, there's no stickers, there's no art book, um, and there's no special cartridge either. It's just a standard looking cartridge. But we will look at this separately in another video with the Super Pocket specifically in mind. But right now, let's have a look at this on the VS. Now if there's anyone still out there playing Full Void on the original handheld, it still works perfectly fine on here as well. I suspect the sound effects are just pretty quiet on this game, as on the original handheld. The sound effects are pretty quiet. I would highly recommend headphones um, or on a large screen TV or monitor so that you can boom that sound out because it's certainly one of those games you want to hear the sounds. It is fantastic. But as you can see, it works absolutely fine on the original handheld. Okay guys, before we actually get started, I'm going to have a look at some of the um, 
Achievements, chapters, settings, obviously there's a few different things here. So achievements, there are 11 achievements that you can unlock through the game. And it's down to certain things you do through the game, um, think certain things you interact with, um, which is quite cool. This might be something of a first on Evercade as well, which is pretty nice. Um, and also gives the game some kind of replayability value because... It's only about three to four hours long to go through, um, obviously depending on skill. Um, it's not the hardest game, so I think most people that play it will most likely get through the game without too much problems. Um, but yeah, you can always replay and try and get those achievements if you've not unlocked them. You see, I've unlocked a couple so far, not that many. Um, so it's certainly something I'm going to have to actually go through and try and unlock um, all the achievements um, that are in the game, which is a, a nice touch. I guess it an, adds a little extra um, to the game and maybe make you want to play through again. Obviously, you've got the chapters. You can skip to certain chapters of the game. There's no save states in this game, so it does save at specific points through the game automatically. And if you die, quite often it will um, restart back at a, a part that's not actually that far from where you died. So that's pretty cool. Now, looking at the settings as well, we've got various audio settings. I've ramped up these especially the sound effects as high as they possibly can go music's up to you i really just leave that where it was now video there's a few settings here that you might want to mess about with um however that probably won't be that obvious when you're playing on like the exp or the super pocket um it's probably one of those things that you'll notice a lot more if you're playing on a large screen tv or a monitor um for example if if you have a look through these, you probably can hardly tell any difference at all until you get to the strong, very strong scan lines, for example. Not really for me. I'm not really into scan lines for the best part. Um, there's also a, um, something to do with the graphic setting. You can have it on auto, which I've got it preset to, and that's probably the best one. There is a slightly different one. There's nearest, which kind of... I don't know, felt it looked a little bit more blocky or less blocky. And then if you want a complete smooth... Or smoother experience, you can put it on linear, but it kind of looks a bit blurry to me. So what I've done is just left it as sharp as possible on auto. And again, that's up to you. You can experiment as you go, um, your own preference. That's the controls, pretty straightforward. And there's a few various languages that you can jump through, Italian and German being the other options if you don't speak English. Um, and that's it. So you can obviously continue if I already played the game. But what we'll do now is start a new game. And I'll sort of jump in and give my thoughts as we go through the game. Um, and then my overall thoughts at the end. So there's no doubt that this game is heavily inspired by a lot of different films, games. Um, I got Stranger Things vibes from it sometimes because um, it definitely felt quite scary um, as you were going through because you're always getting chased by something it seems. Um, I got War of the Worlds vibes from it. I got Terminator 2 vibes. Um, obviously it's been inspired from games like Prince of Persia, Flashback, Limbo, Another World. Um, but happily to say, it's not really as frustrating as any of those games. I never really found that any of the puzzles were that difficult. There was a few here and there that certainly required a lot of trial and error. And no doubt, you will probably die quite a lot of times through this um, game. But it's never, um, it never really gets to a point where you're really frustrated with it. I think... Playing through the full game, yeah, it takes about three to four hours, it's not the longest, but playing through the game, there probably was only one or two stages where I really got stuck and wasn't sure exactly what to do, but eventually I worked it out and uh, made progress and then finished the game, but yeah, that is probably one of the, the points 
definitely worth discussing about this game. It does only take 3-4 hours, which you then think, is this really good value for money? Should there maybe be another game bundled with this collection? I don't really know. That's obviously up for discussion. It's hard to say. No doubt, though, it's a fantastic game. If you were going to buy this on other uh, devices, it would still cost you about £15. So it was, uh, there or thereabouts, and you're getting a physical version Definitely the special edition is the one to collect. It is a little bit more expensive at £25, but you get all those added extras. It is a lovely looking box. Not sure if Everkid will do any more of these in the future. I'm sure they might crop up one or two now and then. Um, it would be quite nice. It depends really what games they have in mind. But this game is certainly fantastic. I've thoroughly enjoyed playing it. Um, it might not be for everyone. Um, if you didn't really like Another World or Flashback, then you might not like these games. Um, but I have to say, they, this game is certainly a lot easier to play than those games. And not as taxing, not as frustrating, um, and certainly more enjoyable. And yet, the sound effects, the atmosphere, the music, it is a tremendous game to get involved with. And as I've probably already said, get the headphones out, put the headphones on your EXP or crank up the sound on your TV and just enjoy it. It is absolutely fantastic. Now, throughout the game you will find yourself interacting with different things such as robots or lifts to try and make progress uh, further into the game uh, and sometimes yet yeah, these sections are a little bit trial and error till you work out um, how many moves you need to go across or along or up or what you need to activate but it's never really that taxing and um, you can easily go back and edit what you've already done and replay it till you get it right. It's certainly enjoyable and it's never really that taxing. So after you've completed the first section, which kind of feels like a tutorial of sorts, um, you reach the sewers where things get a little bit more uh, taxing and the puzzles ramp up slightly and you need to sort of turn off a lot of the sort of waterworks here and there and uh, activate robots to try and help you make progress out the sewers whilst you're probably getting chased with a rabid dog of sorts uh, through the, the sort of sewers and it's always you're always uh, on edge because you have no idea what's going to happen next and I'm not going to ruin what actually happens through the game I'm trying not to include any spoilers uh, too much but it's really good fun uh, and it's certainly a good challenge but it never gets a frustrating challenge which is a good thing for me Thank you. 
Now once you get to this part of the game, don't forget to have a restroom break. Very important when you're playing a game that you always have to have a little break and do your dirty deeds. And one of the most important things here is don't forget to wash your face afterwards. Now once you get to this part of the game, it's maybe about 40 to 50% through the game uh, and things definitely progress uh, more and more difficult as you get towards the end of the game. It never gets in infuriatingly difficult, but you can certainly see through certain parts of the game it gets more difficult. You maybe have to take a little bit extra time to figure out how to make progress and what you're actually supposed to be doing. And at this point, you certainly get yourself a little buddy robot that will help you make progress as well, which is pretty cool. Now, I can't speak highly enough about this game. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Now, it might be just because it's really up my street. I love this type of adventure style game. A little bit like Flashback, but nowhere near as frustrating and certainly more achievable and enjoyable to actually play through. I certainly think that um, Out of the Bit have completely nailed how to make this sort of a game. Hopefully they will make more games like this because um, I think they've done a fantastic job. Be interesting to see if they do make another game like this or they completely make a different style game. They have made a kind of football game before and even a racing game, which hopefully we will cover in a future video and we might see on Evercade at some point. Not entirely sure, but it would be really good if that would happen. But no doubt, this game, Full Void, is certainly the best game that they've made to date. Okay guys, so my final thoughts on Full Void. Now, I think you probably gathered by now, I absolutely love this game. I think it's terrific. It's very atmospheric and it certainly works best on a VS, I think. Just crank up the volume um, or play on the XP with your headphones. Um, it's terrific. It really does involve you. I love that feeling. You've obviously got that feeling of fear as you're going through the game. You're always feeling as if something's constantly chasing you. Um, but they've certainly nailed it. I think this is a terrific, terrific game. Is it worth to be a single cart? Not entirely sure. It is a little bit short as well, which isn't ideal. You could probably replay it again to get all those achievements. Um, but if you just take this game as it is, it's a terrific game. Might not be for everyone, but I, for one, absolutely loved it. Um, and I'm pretty sure it won't be the last we'll hear from out of the bit. And I'm pretty sure it won't be the last single game cart we'll see on Evercade. Hopefully we'll get maybe 
again it's a little bit longer in the future but this is still a fantastic game i highly recommend guys thanks very much for watching we'll catch you again in the next one bye for now